In this video, I'm going to share my top tips to prepare for the CKA exam or the Certified Kubernetes Administrator's exam. But before I get into the tips, let me give you a quick overview of how important the CKA exam is today. Kubernetes is today's Linux operating system for the cloud. As reported by the Linux Foundation's 10th Annual Jobs Report, 77% of organizations are growing their use of cloud and container technologies. The 2022 container report by Datadog found that nearly half of all organizations using containers run Kubernetes to deploy and manage at least some of their containers. So no wonder how engineers are flocking to learn Kubernetes and no wonder the CKA exam is one of the most trending IT certifications today. The Udemy for Business Workplace Learning Trends report indicated an 842% increase in the CKA course consumption. My name is Mumshat Manambath, and today I'll be sharing my top tips to ace the CKA exam. If you have already completed your CKA exam, do leave your experience and your tips in the comments below. Kubernetes has three hands-on exams as of today. The CKA exam, the CKAD, and the CKS. The CKA is for administrators, CKAD is for application developers, and CKS for security specialists. In this video, we're going to talk about the CKA exam. This is for you if you will be working on the administrative side of Kubernetes, such as designing the cluster architecture, installation and configuration of the cluster, workload management, networking, storage, and troubleshooting. Before we dive into my top tips, let me first give you an overview of the exam itself. The exam focuses on five key domains. 25% on cluster architecture, installation and configuration, 15% on workloads and scheduling, 20% on services and networking, 10% on storage, and 30% on troubleshooting. The exam consists of 15 to 20 performance-based tasks that you need to complete within two hours. You'll be given access to Kubernetes clusters and you'll be assessed based on your ability to perform tasks using the command line interface. Now, let me share a little bit about the environment itself. By the way, everything I'm going to share here is already available on the CNCF website on the CKA exam FAQ section. Links are given below. The CKA exam environment has six clusters, each with its own set of nodes. You will be required to switch contacts between each of them during the exam. So it's very important to note that you do that before attempting each question. One of the common mistakes people make is doing things on the wrong cluster. I will share some resources towards the end of this video to tackle some of these problems. And without further ado, let's dive into my top tips to crack the CKA exam. Tip number one, this is a hands-on exam. So make sure you're very comfortable with the Kubernetes command line interface, the kube control utility, and practice typing commands quickly and accurately. Use aliases if needed. I personally am not a big fan of setting aliases, but I've heard others who use it and told me that it helps them. So you're going to be running the kubectl command line utility many times during this exam. So you could save a second each time you type the command. So setting an alias like K for kubectl might give you an extra minute or two towards the end of the exam, which might be beneficial for some of you. However, I've seen people also recommend things like this. Uh, my recommendation would be to not get obsessed with it either. You know, you don't have to spend an entire hour out of the two hours that you have setting up your aliases and shortcuts and other things. Tip number two, you don't have to write the exam alone. You're allowed to have one friend to accompany you. And that friend, my friends, is the Kubernetes documentation pages. You're allowed to view and refer to the Kubernetes documentation pages during the exam to look up important information. You see, that's one of the beauties of the Kubernetes certification exam. Unlike many other exams, it doesn't test your memory skills or how much you can remember. It tests if you can actually get shit done. So make sure you know exactly what information is where and how to easily search for it in the Kubernetes documentation pages. And no, you're not allowed to use bookmarks and don't even try to do that. Tip number three, review your work after each question and make sure you got it right. You don't want to get into a situation where you spent like 10 to 15 minutes working on a question and not knowing that something was not done correctly. Let's say if you had to create a pod, do not just run a command to create a pod and assume it's working and proceed to the next question. Instead, make sure you verify by running a kubectl get pods command, for instance, and make sure that it is in a running state. I've had so many students tell me that they were sure that they did it right, but they still didn't get the marks for it. So don't end up in that situation. 
Tip number four, another reason why people think they did it right but didn't actually get it right is when they do not copy and paste. Yes, my next tip is that you must copy and paste during the exam. You see, most of the questions in the exam will have some weird name for the object that you, you have to create. For example, a question could be to create a pod by the name XYZ-33568932 or something. If you try to type that in yourself, and if you got any character wrong, you won't get any points for that question. So always copy the name from the question or any other details and paste it into the terminal. Tip number five, my next tip is about managing time effectively. The exam consists of anywhere from 15 to 20 questions. Each question has a varying difficulty level and some of them may be easy and others may be hard. And each question has its own weight depending upon the difficulty level too. So it's important to be smart in deciding how much time you're going to spend on each question. Do not get stuck on a single question and waste your entire time on that. You don't need to get 100% to pass the exam. You only need 66% or about to clear the CKA exam. So even if you don't get all of them right, you can still pass the exam. So my recommendation is to attempt all the easy questions first and make sure you get them right. Time limit yourself for each question. If you're stuck on any question for more than 10 minutes, skip to the other questions and come back to this at the end of the exam. So those are my top five tips to clear the CKA exam. And here's a quick learning guide that we have put together for you on CodeCloud. Now, depending on the level of your technical skills today, you may start anywhere on this path. You must have some Linux and networking knowledge as the exam environments are based on Linux. And if you need a refresher on Linux, I would highly recommend the Linux basics course. You'll learn Linux with hands-on labs. Now, Kubernetes is a container orchestration system, so knowledge of containers is a must. If you're new to containers, go through the Docker for Beginners course. It's a three hours course that will get you up to speed with containers in no time. And if you are new to Kubernetes, I would recommend the Kubernetes for Beginners course. And once you gain the basics of Kubernetes, our CKA exam prep course will help you learn everything you need to know for the CKA exam along with hands-on labs and mock exams at the end. And finally, the cherry on the cake is our ultimate CKA mock exam series that is exclusively available on CodeCloud and has over 10 mock exams with an exam environment having a very similar setup as the real exam. You'll have multiple clusters that you will have to switch back and forth between and that will help you prepare for the actual exam. You can find the link to the learning path right here. We're also a certified Kubernetes training partner, so you can rest assured that you're in safe hands. Now, one of the common questions I hear is how long does it take for you to prepare for the exam? Now, it all depends on where you stand today and how much time you're willing to put in uh, on a per day, per week basis to prepare for the exam. We have had students who have taken three to six months to prepare for the exam and others who already had some experience just sit through two weeks straight and pass the exam at the end of it. But at a high level, here is a chart that we've put together. If you spend two hours a day, you should be able to complete the CKA course in about three months, four hours a day, then you'll have to spend about one and a half to two months and six hours a day, it might take you one to uh, one and a half months. You can see the time it would take for you to go through the other courses as well in this chart. Now, of course, this is completely dependent upon how fast you can pick things up. So it may be different for different people, but this is like a high level overview of a chart that you can refer to. So what's next once you prepare for the exam? Well, register for the exam on the CNCF website. As of today, it costs $395. You get two attempts for the exam. And if you fail the first one, you can attempt again a second time. And no, you don't have to attempt the second time if you already passed the exam the first time. Someone actually asked me that once. Now, you may have a lot of questions about the exam day itself. Like, what can you do and what are you not supposed to do uh, in the testing room? Like, what monitors to use, what keyboards to use, what camera to use, and etc. We have collated a list of all questions from our existing users and created an FAQ page that's available on our GitHub uh, page so you can check that out here. And finally, a word before you leave. You see, the exam is a practical and performance-based exam for a reason. CNCF wants to make sure that they certify people who have actual skills, who can do stuff. So it's very important that you get your intentions right and your heart in the right place when you prepare for this exam. Your goal and only goal should be to learn as much as you can while you prepare for the exam. Consider the exam as just a cover to push you to spend as much time as you can in learning the concepts. Well, understand that the real win here is the knowledge you gain by putting yourself through months of learning and practice. 
and not the piece of paper that you get at the end of it. So try to enjoy the journey of learning more than obtaining the certification itself. Ultimately, the certificate by itself is not going to get you anywhere or be of any value if you haven't actually learned the concepts well enough. So having said that, I wish you all the best for your certification and I hope you will truly enjoy the journey of learning. Until next time, goodbye.